Hello, everybody. It's Chris Bezanoy or Chris B with CSB Security Inc. Uh, sitting in a hotel room uh, out in eastern Canada on day one of a two day attestation. I wanted to make a video today in my hotel room because of something that happened today on site when we were doing our attestation. It's never happened to me before. I've heard it happening to other consultants, I've heard it happening to general contractors, I've heard it happening to clients, but it's never really happened to me. I want to let you know what happened how you can avoid it, and of course what to do about it should it happen to you. So a bit of a backstory. Today we arrived on site for the first time. We were not contracted to do any project management, so we kind of came into the site a little bit blind. We had asked for pictures. They did show us some pictures. We did see everything that we needed to see. So we are expecting to come on site and just start filming. So we got on site, and the general contractor, the GC, pulls us aside and said, listen, we were carrying the security installer under our contract. We are the ones that are going to be paying them. We're not very happy with them. They haven't really listened to us. It doesn't seem like they know what they're doing. The systems aren't working properly. We don't have access control functioning. Cameras are put in the wrong spot. There's just a whole bunch of issues. The uh, general contractor indicated that there's been some altercations, some yelling and some screaming on both sides. But generally speaking, they were not happy with the integrator and the integrator wasn't ready for the attestation. Kind of a common thing, but that's not what is the bad part about this story. So we went, obviously went to the, uh, the installer and said, okay, guys, um, we understand that you may not be ready. Uh, we understand there may be some issues on site, maybe some challenges, but how do we move forward? We're here to help. Let's get this attestation done for the client. Uh, let's leave stuff in the past. Let's just move forward. Of course, that was a chance for the integrator to complain about the GC, which is common, things that didn't happen properly, uh, conduit that wasn't run, rooms that weren't ready for them to go into and install devices, epoxy coated floor that was sticky for four days, all that kind of stuff came to light. But of course, as security consultants, we always just want to make sure everybody gets along. So we talked to the general contractor, we talked to the installers and say, that guys, here's a go forward plan. What do you have ready? What don't you have ready? Uh, these are the things that we think you should get ready right away. These are things that we can kind of wait and just let them be. And about, uh, I would say, four hours later, now we're talking about two o'clock in the afternoon, we're in the facility. Uh, me and my team are just looking, taking a look around, making sure everything's GBB compliant, you know, the normal stuff that we do. And we heard a loud crash, boom, bang, and a whole bunch of swearing and yelling and cursing and just sounding like something was going on. So obviously, everybody comes running. We want to make sure nobody's hurt. We want to make sure everything's okay. We're not quite sure what happened. So we run to the other side of the facility to find out what happened. We walk into this flower room, which was not going to be part of the attestation. It was still in various stages of being installed, but it's a flower room. And all of a sudden, we witness, I would say, five security system installers. So the installation company that hires or contracts electricians and some programmers and that sort of thing, some project managers are on one side of the room. And the GC and his project managers and site supers on the other side of the room, and they are yelling and screaming at each other, just calling each other names and F this, F you. Uh, you're the worst company ever. You're the worst GC ever. You know, we're going to pull your contract. Oh, yeah, we're going to quit. All just, just really bad things, things that you just never wish to happen when you're doing your installation, let alone hiring somebody like ourselves to come out and do the attestation with a video crew. And we're just standing there going, number one, you're not ready. But number two, um, are we in WrestleMania? If anybody remembers growing up, I went to WrestleMania. It was a scene out of WrestleMania where I was convinced it was staged. I thought it was one big joke. I just looked at it and went, there's no way that they're doing this right now. It almost came to fist fighting. And so basically the gist of it is the GC got upset and said, you know what? I'm going to pull your contract. If you don't finish this by XYZ date, if you don't finish this by today, if you don't get your shit together, I'm going to pull your contract. And the integrator said, okay, I'll do you one better. I'll quit. And of course, everybody looked at each other and went, no, nah, that's not going to happen. Come on, guys, let's all get along. And literally, the integrator looked at the GC and said, I'm out of here. Good luck trying to find somebody else to do your shitty site. Packed up his crew packed up all their tools, and we literally watched them walk out of the facility and drive away. Now, we never wish this upon anybody. We've heard it happening before. Sometimes it escalates that far. Most of the time it doesn't. Most of the time people just yell, scream, swear, and vow to never work with each other again, but they always push forward. This is the one time I've actually witnessed an integrator walk off the site. Now, 
We're going to talk about how to avoid that from happening. Yes, tempers flare. Yes, people yell at each other. Yes, stresses are pretty high in these situations. But how do you protect yourself as a client or as a general contractor against an integrator that's willing to just walk away and leave you hanging high and dry? The answer is the documents that you created in your contract. Whether it was a tender that was written, whether it was just a contract that says, hey, we're going to provide this and we sign on the dotted line and you accept it and we will do it for you. You got to make sure certain things are in place in the contract. You got to make sure that maybe there's a performance bond. Maybe it's saying, hey, integrator, if you get this job done two months early, we'll give you some money. We'll give you extra money for getting it done early. That's more like a performance bond to say, if you perform really well, we'll give you some money at the end. Be mindful though, you also have to say if they're, they don't perform, you're gonna take away some money. So that's usually not included in a tender, but it can be included in a contract if you wanted it to. Saying performance bond, you do well, you get paid more. You don't do so well, we're not paying you. Second thing you wanna make sure in that tender document or in that contract that you write is clauses that say, well, if the integrator walks off site for whatever reason, you are allowed to and you have the right to contract another integrator and send the bill to the original installer. That's a nice way of saying, if you walk off the job, we're finding somebody else and you're getting the bill. It happens and you can put that into your contract. Vice versa though, the integrator is gonna come back and say, okay, if that happens, it has to be with due cause. You can't just say, okay, we walked off the job so therefore you're gonna find somebody new. What if the site conditions weren't good enough to, uh, for us to work? What if you were hindering our job because your epoxy coated floors were always getting in our way? There are things you have to be careful of. You can't just say, integrator walked off the job, let's find somebody else and hire somebody else. A good integrator will read that contract and go, okay, but that's only if we're not hindered. We have a safe environment. There's nothing that's gonna kill us if we're on site. I have seen it before where the general contractor says, you have to show up tomorrow. And the integrator says, no. We are not showing up tomorrow. Why? You've got live wires and you just had a flood. That's a legitimate concern. So we're not talking about that. We're just saying if the integrator leaves without undue cause, you should be able to go and find another integrator and send them the bill. That's an, it, it's an idea and it's something that does happen in contracts. It is a tip for you to include in your contract should you want to. So the key is contract. Make sure it's ironclad. Make sure it covers all the basics, make sure it covers your protection. And also you gotta make sure you cover your installer's protection. You gotta put it in there to make sure it's fair to say, if we're gonna contract you, you provide this, we provide this, let's all get along. So, what to do if it happens to you? That's an interesting question. Because in, a, in this example, if the general contractor decides to hire somebody new and brings in another installer, you gotta think, the new installer is going to come in and try to save the day, but they most likely won't be able to. And here's why. The original installer, I guarantee you, in their contract would write something to the effect of any preventative maintenance warranties, any installation warranties, anything that we warranty as part of the installation and programming of your facility and security systems is null and void if somebody touches the system. So. You went out and hired another integrator. You figured I'm gonna slap a bill uh, to the original integrator and they're gonna pay through the nose. So I'm gonna hire somebody else to come in. They're gonna come in and try to touch the system. Neither A, they're gonna be blocked because all the passwords are held by the original installer. B, if there are no passwords and they touch the system, they null and void all warranties. And most likely C, they won't ever be able to do any firmware upgrades. So if you do hire them and they do save the day, and they use the original system and they crack all the codes and break into the passwords or whatever, you'll find the second that they need to do a massive security update, an important security update, they won't be able to. The reason being, the original integrator most likely owns your system. Keep in mind, the integrator owns the system until they hand it over to the client. If the integrator leaves the site and walks off the site, who owns the system? To all the manufacturers, it's still the original integrator. To anybody that does preventative maintenance, any sort of Dell servers that have uh, preventative maintenance and warranties, access control system, intrusion systems, you name it, video surveillance, most likely the original installer is still the name on the contract for purchasing those products.
which means if you ever want to do a security update, the person, the manufacturer that was uh, uh, supplied your system would sit there and go, you're not on file. You're not the legal right and rightful owner of this system. Keep in mind, a lot of clients think that just because they hire a security consultant and just because they hire a security integrator, that they automatically own the system. That the security consultant designs it, they hand over the plans, they get everything all in line, and the owner thinks, okay, great. The client thinks, great, I own it now. It's not true. The installer owns it until they sign it over to you. That's way, their way of making sure they get paid. So, pitfalls here. Yes, you have to write a proper contract. Yes, they have to make sure it's amicable, amicable between both sides. The answer is not to necessarily hire another integrator unless you've tried to get the original one back. You try to throw them a bit more money, play nice in the sandbox, separate the two sides, whatever the case may be. If they refuse to come back, I guarantee you your next integrator that you call in is either A, going to tell you to rip out the system and reinstall the entire thing at hundred grand. B, tell you that they have to hack into the system, which null and voids any warranties. And C, will tell you that they can't do any upgrades, so you're going to have to flip out the system eventually anyway. The only way to really truly avoid this is to make sure you've got your consultants on file at all times. Whether it be a security consultant that does project management, whether it be somebody else, a third party, maybe yourself being the client wants to do the project management, somebody needs to step in the middle and mediate the two sides. GC, go off to the left. Integrator, go off to the right. You stand in the middle and you say, what would the left side like? What would the right side like? You got to make sure it never escalates to a point where the GC and the security installer are yelling at each other. You know they're yelling at each other. You know it's very tense. And all of a sudden the integrator walks off the site. You need to avoid it by getting consultants like ourselves to step in. So you guys don't have to like each other, but you will work together because now I'm being asked to step in and make sure both sides get this job done because the end result is the license. Again, never happened to me before, was interesting, hence why I'm doing this video late at night in a hotel room. You guys need to know your contracts need to be important, your consultants need to be brought on board, third party consultants for any sort of project management should two sides not want to talk to each other or to avoid that from happening. And the answer is not always just to let the integrator walk away or fire them and bring in somebody new. That new integrator coming in may be not the best choice because their hands are tied. They don't have the passwords. They will null and void your preventative maintenance. They don't own the system. They won't get manufacturer support. Tons of things could go wrong. Either way, uh, thanks for watching. We do a lot of these uh, little tiny videos, informative, that sort of thing, helping people through the ACMPR and, of course, the Cannabis Act. Uh, feel free to follow us, and we look forward to seeing you at the next video.